Hi and welcome to Neat AI. So this is part 6 in the two-part series I'd originally planned detailing the inner workings of the Neat algorithm I implemented to solve the exclusive OR problem as described in the original Ken Stanley paper. And it all came about because of this spike which appeared in the analytics of the Flappy Bird video which seemed to indicate a level of interest in the speciation aspect and how it works. So I started by defining the key elements of the class used by the code and talked about the main functions needed to produce the first generation of objects that would form the population which the genetic algorithm would focus on during the evolutionary stage. So these will be things like the initialize function which sets up the basic networks with the main arrays for storing node and connection information, the data types needed to store the key parameters, loading the inputs, running the network, and also the importance of being able to draw the network for fault checking and providing confidence that the arrays were storing the topological information correctly. From there I focused on recurrent connections and when they should be used and what effect they'd have on the end solution and walked through an example of how the signal data would flow through a network with recurrent connections both disabled and enabled. And then it was on to the key points around speciation. How it works, what do the different elements of the equation mean, the impact of the scaling factors, and also how the number of offspring assigned to each species is determined. Crossover was next, which is the process that actually produces the offspring by selecting parents based on their comparative fitness from within a species and mixing connection weights randomly from both parents for connections that they both share. So of those three main areas, we've dealt with two of them. So let's now focus on mutation and finish this off. And this is the easy part, sort of. Once crossover is complete, I take each member of the population in turn and mutate the weights and also the topology by adding a node or connection and the chance of that occurring is defined at the start. For the weights, it's relatively straightforward. For the network involved, I set the chance of mutating its weights at 80% for exclusive OR and if it's selected for mutation, all you need to do is go through the connection array and modify the weight parameter for each connection. I set the chance of it being modified at 90%, which results in a plus or minus adjustment of 20%, and there's just a 10% chance of the connection weight being completely reset to a random value. So far, so good. Next up is adding a connection to the network. This is done by first selecting two nodes at random from the node array, and using those as the from and to nodes in the new entry that gets placed in the connection array. Of course, there have to be some validation steps to ensure it's a valid connection. There can't already be a connection between those nodes. You can't select the same node twice or you'll end up with a recurrent connection back to the same node. The input to this node would tend towards infinity over time if the weight value goes over one. So we don't allow that. Likewise, if the nodes are on the same layer, you'll also end up with a recurrent connection that's not allowed for exactly the same reason. And if the from node layer is greater than the to node layer, well, that's a recurrent connection. And if you don't want those, then you'd disallow it here. And the weight value for the new connection is set to a random value. The innovation ID is taken from the lookup table as described in an earlier video, and the connection is set to enabled. So for exclusive OR, there's a 5% chance of a new connection being created. I would normally allow 20 attempts to get a valid node pair, which would allow for a valid connection to be created, which doesn't break the validation rules. And if there is a connection between the nodes, but it's disabled, then there's a 25% chance of that connection being re-enabled. And that's the manner in which disabled connections can come back to life. Adding a node is where it gets interesting. An enabled forward connection is selected at random as the place for the new node, and then it's disabled. Two new connections are then placed in the connection array, and one new node placed in the node array. Here the new node is node 7, and the 17 connection weight is set to the same value as the disabled connection, and the 76 connection weight is set randomly. And now comes the fun part, setting the node layers. And these need to be right as the signal from the inputs will propagate through the network from left to right, starting at layer 1, then layer 2, 3 and so on. Obviously layer 1 nodes never change. These are the input nodes and I've defined those as being layer 1. Now a node's position is determined by the longest path back to the input layer. So every time a node is added to a network, all nodes in the network need to have their layer position recalculated as a new node addition could affect the position of multiple nodes. It's not that complicated and is a quick check to perform. For each hidden node in the node array, I go to the connection array and look for all connections that terminate at that node. And I follow those connections back to the input layer, keeping a note of the longest path found. Here, for example, node seven is one step back to the input layer, so it's in layer two. It's the same for node five, which is also in layer two. Node six has two paths back, the longest of which is two steps, 
it would must belong in layer 3. And the output nodes are set to the maximum hidden node layer, plus 1. The node 4 is in layer 4. So, select a connection at random, disable it, add one node to the node array, add two connections to the connection array, and get the layers right. If you allow recurrent connections in your network, there's a couple of other checks you need to perform. Take this network as an example. There's a recurrent connection flowing from node 5 back to node 7. If a node is added between nodes 1 and 7, after the layers get adjusted, you'll end up with the following. Having connections between nodes on the same layer is simply not allowed, so this now needs to be disabled, represented here by a dashed line. In addition, if another node is added between nodes 1 and 9, the recurrent connection is no longer recurrent, so that flag needs to be set to false for that connection as there is a chance the connection could be re-enabled in future. To test these functions, I just try and break them by getting a network to add dozens of nodes and connections and running the display network function to check the result. And with the mutation steps done, we now have a generation 1. So it's apply the inputs, set the fitness, speciate, crossover, mutate for generation after generation until the fitness of one of the members gets over 3.95, at which point it says it's done. So look, I think we're about all done with Exclusive Ore. If you have any questions, please post a comment. I hope it was of some use to you in your implementation of NEAT. I got a bit bored this week as we're back in COVID lockdown, so I coded up Boyd's and had some fun with it. So I'll do a video on that next. As always, thanks for watching.